Good morning. This is Sunday, March 29th, 2020. Welcome to our time of worship. I am Jerry Streets, Senior Pastor of the Dixwell Avenue Congregational United Church of Christ in New Haven, Connecticut. Please see our church website at dixwellucc.org. There you will find more information about our church, upcoming services, Holy Week, Monday, Thursday, Palm Sunday, and Easter, as well as other resources that we hope will be inspiring to you. Although we cannot be physically present with one another, we are indeed thankful for being able to connect with one another by the use of social media platforms. 30 minutes following this stream broadcast, I invite you to join us for a virtual coffee hour via Zoom. The address will be posted on our church's Facebook page. There is for many of us, this is for many of us, the most stressful time under which we have lived. We feel the stress in our bodies, in the way our current circumstances preoccupies our thinking, in the way it causes us to feel and behave. I hope what I offer you today to consider will help us all on our common journey of coping with life as we now know it. For those of you who do not know, Dixwell Church was founded in New Haven, Connecticut in 1820. This is the 200th anniversary year of this congregation. We are a multicultural church with a proud history of being the oldest African-American congregational church in the world. Its founding members were white and free persons of color and former enslaved people. As a Christian community, Dixwell Church has always striven to express our commitment to fight all forms of oppression and to help others. My friends, I awakened this morning to the beautiful sound of chirping birds. It is difficult to be mindful of the everyday blessings of life like this when we are all facing the threat of illness and aware of those who are suffering and dying. Yet in the midst of all that is alarming us, birds do sing, and there are people risking their lives on our behalf, people who are risking their lives to aid and comfort and heal others. Many are practicing what it means to be a good neighbor and our sisters and brothers keeper. This gives us hope and fills us with gratitude. Please remember and reach out to those whom you know who are ill or otherwise in need of help. I invite you now to receive this prayer wherever you are on your faith journey. Let us pray. Gracious God, your spirit nurtures us in all of creation and we pray because we sense your presence and need for your guidance. When we feel that our hope in you, our hope in life, and our hope in the possibility of a future is being shattered, help us to remember that you are our hope and rock in a weary land. Help us to hear your voice when our anxiety, our grief, our sorrow silence us. Help us to remember that we can endure change and that you will help us to find a way through the challenges we now face. Evil and pain will not have ultimate victory because we believe that through the life, death, and resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, you have shown us that only your authority and love are final. Help us to be guardians of those truths that bring light where there is darkness and where there is misery, hope. 
We pray for those suffering from wounds that are visible and invisible, and that a way of healing and peace come quickly to them in our world. Let us not lose confidence in the power of good to overcome evil. Help the leaders of our nations to discipline their use of power with wisdom and humility. It is our faith in you, O God, that helps us to sustain us during difficult as well as good times. We seek insight in your guidance and a new awareness of what is possible for us and others and for our world about which we care. Because we are yours, you will not lead us away from your truth. And when we are shadowed by things that carry us to the depth of anxiety, you bring us comfort and other blessings in ways unimaginable and undetermined by us. So compassionate God, our help in ages past, our morning joy and hope for tomorrow, you are with us even when we feel lost or unsure about our direction. It is our desire to love you and ourselves and one another. And so we pray that when all other signals of our faithfulness are unclear, that this longing, that this loving will be enough to lead us according to your will. Amen. Beloved, before I offer a meditation for today, here are some suggestions as we deal with this stressful time. Remember that we are not alone and that a lot of what is going on now can trigger things or make things worse that already bother us. Remember, we have the power to make decisions. And so here are a few suggestions. Stay informed, but don't be overwhelmed with the daily news. Number two, don't be afraid to ask for help should you need it. Number three, ask others how they are coping with the moment. They might have ideas that will be helpful to you. Four, be willing to adapt and make changes. Five, remember that self-interest is not selfishness. Take care of yourself. Six, trust yourself to do what is right. Seven, reach out to others. Eight, practice a prayerful meditation life. Nine, forgive yourself and forgive others. And number 10, remember the affirmation of Psalm 30. Weeping may endure for the night, but joy comes in the morning. Today, my friends, I want to talk to you about what faith has to offer, seeing beyond the present moment. The writer of the book of Hebrews in the New Testament wrote in its first chapter, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. We are being plagued today by something we can only see under a microscope. What we do see with our naked eye are people suffering, those who are caring for those who are ill, and people striving to protect us from becoming ill and finding an antidote for our diseases. We see ourselves practicing protective measures and adjusting daily to the realities of our current situation. What may be difficult for us to see is that we can make choices and to choose can be an act of faith. I am reminded of the thought from Viktor Frankl upon his reflection while living in captivity that the question is not what is the meaning of my life living under the circumstance of oppression, but how can I live so that my life has meaning? Now, my friends, I come from a community with a shared history 
of institutional slavery and oppression. I know that a pandemic is different from living in a prescribed situation of a concentration camp like Viktor Frankl or institutional racism and segregation. If one's circle is a narrow boundary of despair, at least there is the hope of appealing to others and the possibility of getting out of it and being rescued from it and moving into the spaces of freedom and life. The question, however, of making meaning of our lives gives our current situation indeed the perspective from our individual views as well as a social mandate. Personal attributes of faith can be a source of strength, but our survival and potential for survival as human beings is, as we are experiencing, profoundly social. The interconnection between the personal faith and other attributes of human resilience and the domains of medicine and public health share a common bond of hope and valuing human life and value in creating a more just and healthy society and world. Now I think faith in the spiritual sense ultimately has the ability to help us as human beings to imagine a new creation, a new society, a new world, and inspires us to try to make it happen. Those who are working in and from a science and public health perspective in context, I hope, are motivated beyond survival as self-interest, but also as those who value human life and its continuation and flourishing. To me, this can be one of the ultimate ways of expressing and being spiritual. To the extent to which different religious faith traditions can help us to affirm and celebrate this, is a contribution they can make to this current public health crisis and the moral issues it raises about what it means for us as human beings to live in community and sharing spaces on this planet. Ironically, humanity is always faced with the challenge of discerning what constitutes and how to live a meaningful life. Our faith in God our faith in ourselves, our faith in the goodness of others, our faith in what science can teach us, and our faith that there will be a future is what we can offer to this present moment. This faith helps us to feel, to imagine, and to see new possibilities for ourselves and our life together as a global community. This faith reminds us that we can choose how we will respond to the challenges we face. It can open our eyes to see what we can give and learn from our global neighbors to enhance life everywhere. This is not a time of esoteric learning and self-centered survival. Our current crisis is inviting us to have a great and global conversation about the terms under which we will choose to live. Learning new theories that will support technology and science and learning the broader facts about the Earth's people and our environments, its physical and chemical secrets, as Dr. Sam Proctor used to teach, will help us to make evident the substance of things for which we hope. Dr. Proctor also wrote and said, deep knowledge a more complete understanding of our common origins, capacities, needs, and destiny is in order now. He reminds us that there is a large fund of knowledge of art and music from the entire human family that should be the intellectual property of everyone. This is indeed the promise of having a worldwide web of accessibility and communication. We can learn from one another, and we depend upon one another for survival and flourishing as human beings. And so, my friends, you see, faith in ourselves as creations of God, who has given us capacity to meet our challenges, 
offers us a vision beyond the current situation while at the same time dealing with its reality. It is a split vision. It deals with the now and the not yet. Our response to what threatens us can be more of an enemy to us than the threat itself. The humility we feel now as a burden imposed upon us is really a gift for, a gift for us to discover the strength and power of our being dependent upon one another and upon God. But it is not just our interdependence that we celebrate. Our religious faith reminds us of our inherent goodness and ability to deal with what threatens us. Our Christian story is about a God who is and weeps with us and allows us to make choices about how we will live. Nature is informing us about who we are as humans and the variety of conditions under which we live, both their negative and positive consequences. Now is the time to allow our faith to help us to imagine. Now is the time to allow our faith to help us to see, and now is the time for our faith to help us to feel the things for which we hope and to make evident their substance to the glory of God and to human well-being. The psalmist encourages us to wait upon God and be of good courage. And so, my friends, wait upon God. Be of good courage. Have faith in God and in yourself and in the future. And together with one another and with God, we shall see a brighter day. Remember, weeping may endure the night, but joy, joy will come in the morning. God bless you.